I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1981. That was the day 13,000 workers in the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization, or PATCO, went out on strike. Highly stressed workers had been driven to nervous exhaustion by long hours, problematic technology, and brutal management. They wanted better pay and working conditions in a 32-hour work week. Patco workers had proven that militancy bred victories throughout the 1970s. But public sector employers went on the offensive as the decade drew to a close. By the time Ronald Reagan was elected to office, automation, deregulation, and inflation had taken its toll. As Joseph McCartan details in his book Collision Course, controllers found new technology unreliable. They experienced, on average, a computer outage a day in critical moments of takeoffs and landings. As well, the Airline Deregulation Act and the Civil Service Reform Act became law in October 1978, serving to restrict union rights and worsen working conditions. By the late 1970s, inflation had tripled. Federal workers, unlike those in the private sector, lacked any COLA protections. Emboldened by their skill level, solidarity, and previous victories, the controllers walked. Invoking Taft-Hartley, President Reagan issued a 48-hour back-to-work ultimatum. In a historic move, he fired the strikers, jailed their leaders, and forced costly injunctions that spelled doom for the union and the labor movement. Many labor activists had hoped the Teamsters and machinists would walk out in support. Instead, the strike was a pivotal moment for labor. It ushered in an era of unprecedented attacks not seen since the 1930s. As Robert Weir notes, Patco's defeat touched off a new wave of downsizing, decertification, and concession strikes. The labor movement continues to suffer its impact today. <laughs>